Okay, back at it with part three of the first coup round. I pulled the map out here to show the entire game board that we have going on. As you can see, when the with the game that has like a vertical map board like this, it's very difficult to get it all on the screen and, and, and not have a ton of just wasted space over here, but also let you like see everything. That's why I scroll a lot. Uh, hopefully that's not too annoying, but let's take a look at the big board here uh, right before we jump back into some more uh, card action. You can kind of see that the VC is definitely concentrated in the south, not so much in the north, the blue pieces here. Um, last time we had uh, Bin Din was uh, targeted by the, the U.S. They were able to actually remove the Viet Cong there. That is sort of annoying, although it did put this province at passive uh, opposition. Uh, the, v the North Vietnamese army is, of course, just silent silently, well, not so silently, maybe they're making a lot of noise, who knows. Uh, they're building up their presence in Cambodia and Laos, and the Arvin has made moves into the Mekong Delta, uh, but not much else otherwise. Oh, they did move this uh, troop up here, right? That's what happened last time. We did sort of do a raid. We sent a special forces troop into Quang Tri, leaving this base exposed. So we're going to now go back to our, uh, figured out the actual, the proper percentage here. It is 47%. That lets us get all the board on and lets us see the cards. Boom, now you know the secret of how that works, 47%. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Can we end the faction play and do all that stuff? I don't know why that's moving. That's okay. So who do we got up? Viet Cong. All right, let's take a look at the card again. This is War Photographer. Events, let's see, non-shaded. Three out of play US pieces to available. Okay, so that actually could be good. That could be good. The U.S. might want to do that, maybe, if they get the chance of the event. The shaded event says the NVA placed six troops outside of South Vietnam, add six resources, and if executing, stay eligible. Um, you know, as the Viet Cong, I'm not, I mean, I want my NVA compatriots to do slightly well, but I'm not willing to, like, give up one of my ops to help them that much. Um... I don't necessarily want the U.S. to do this event, but I wouldn't be like terribly upset if the U.S. gave up one of its abilities to do things uh, to take this event. Because, you know, three out of play pieces to available, yeah, that would boost them a little bit in their score if they brought troops in and a base, right? Because it would move this up three. But they don't get to bring them in until the coup round happens. Uh, they might be able to build a base, I guess. But they can't bring any troops in until the coup round, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm not too worried about that. And honestly, what I want to do is show off some of the VC special activities. We need to rally anyway, and we're going to talk about that in a second. So yeah, we're going to Op and Special, baby. Let's get our little pieces marker out. Um, so we got removed from Ken Fong earlier. We're coming back in. The reason we can do that is because our rally, I believe, just, just so we can go over it, says I can target any provinces or cities without support on one resource per space. So basically anything that's just neutral or has opposition, I can target. Okay, so we're gonna go back there. We're gonna bring more pieces back into Kuang Tri. I wanna get into one of these cities and start wrecking havoc in the city. I think that's really important. And since we're already like have a strong presence here in uh, Play Coup, why not go into Kontum? I mean, Da Nang would be a, another good one, but they already have US troops there and US troops are just really good at like hurting me. I could go into Hue as, as well. That would be like a pretty great option. Um, but again, they've got some troops nearby. They've got some cubes. I kind And even though they have a lot of cubes here, I kind of want to keep them off balance, you know, a little bit. So we have the money. That's why we tax so much. So let's bring another gorilla back into Bendin just to keep it honest so that they have to deal with us somehow. Let's bring one into Kontum. I could bring even more gorillas here into Play Coup and really just start wrecking house you know and that might not be a terrible idea but i don't want to spend all my money right now because i want to spend some here and convert this into a base and i want to spend some here because i want to slowly build up my presence there so that's actually quite a bit there i've got one two three four five six so yeah i mean that's that's pretty good that's pretty good six rallies what i want to do is use my special op to subvert so I don't think we've talked too much. I think we did the taxes, and we did talk about Subvert last time. So I can pick either with a mar Rally, March, or Terror Op. I'm going to pick one or two spaces with Underground VC Gorilla and any Arvin Troops or Police. Now, if you remember, we can do our Ops in any order we want, but I'm going to do Rally and then do the Special. Now, why would I do that? Because I want to use my Subvert in two spaces. I want to use it here, 
in Contum. And I want to use it here in Kenpong. Now I don't have a gorilla there yet. So technically I could not do the special there because I don't have an underground gorilla. But I will soon. Okay, so get rid of the pieces. Let's pay for our rally. That's six resources. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, down to eight. Going to have to start thinking about taxing again soon. Um, so we'll see. We'll see about that. Okay. We're going to rally here. We have the base. It's got two populations. So we can put three gorillas there. We're doing it. Oh yeah, so you only got 11 left. So this is actually pretty good. We're getting a lot of our forces on the board, even though we've sort of taken some lumps, some hits. Not a big deal. And I like to spread them out a little bit because, you know, I should be doing that all the time. Okay, so there's three there. We're going to put one in Contoon. Boom. We're going to put one in Bindin. Boom. Here, I want to take two pieces and turn them into a base. So we'll take the active piece because it honestly would have to, it's vulnerable right now. So we'll flip it back over there and remove, no, not mark it moved. Return it to available, return it to available. Oh yeah, getting another sweet base out there. And that's good for us. That's part of our victory conditions for the VC is building bases. So I think we both want to build bases. Yeah, opposed both places and NBA wants to build bases too. Everybody wants bases. All your base are belong to us. Uh, that's actually an NBA move, right? Because I can subvert. But that's getting way meta into some funny things that if you're not as into gamer humor, there you go. Okay, so we're going to throw down another uh, gorilla here in Ken Fong. Boom. Going to throw another one here in Ken Gang. And then next turn, we should be safe enough to start putting a base down if we don't get more interruptions, which hopefully we won't. Okay, so I put all the pieces I wanted to do, right? Yeah, got everybody taken care of. So now we'll do the subvert activity. So subvert lets us activate a gorilla in a space that has an underground gorilla and Arvin uh, cubes. So here in Contum, we're going to activate this guy. So what we can do is either we can take two cubes away and just remove them, send them back to their you know Arvin available, or we can swap out a cube with a gorilla. I actually want to do, if we remove two, we lower the patronage by one. So that's one way that we can fight sort of this uh, victory condition for the coin forces, because if we look at the stack of things here, we could actually start lowering the patronage marker. And that's actually a good idea because we can only do it very slowly and limitedly, like in one, you know, for removing two. But they haven't really started building their patronage up too high yet. So again, I'm not too worried about it. Um, so yeah, let's just do that. I want to target, I like to remove police. Police tend to let them do the coin activity, the pacify stuff, which I don't want as the VC. I don't want any support being generated. I think that's bad, bad news. And usually they have a lot more troops, and troops just kind of can move around and attack, and police have a limited ability to attack. So I like getting rid of the police, even though the troops kind of are a little more threatening, but the police are what you absolutely need to do the pacify for the Arvin. So I'm going to remove one of these, and then I'm going to get... I shouldn't do the click noise. I'm doing a microphone right by my face. Sorry. And uh, then we'll put a we'll put a guy there. Boom. That's super hot. Then we're going to come down here, and look, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say, mark him active and take one of these troops away and bring me another gorilla. Now, I could just remove two, but then there would be two cubes there and one active guy, and if they got another round, they could just attack and remove that gorilla, and it'd be like, oh, okay, well, yay. But this way, they have to at least use a sweep op if they want to expose the other gorilla, which they'll want to do, because they don't want to keep suffering subvert or maybe ambush attack potentials. And in this way, I can get like more of my pieces on the board. You know, it's kind of what I want to do as the VC. I want to try to get all my pieces out as soon as possible and be able to maximize what I can do with them. Okay, so that's literally all the VC wants to do. Cool. Uh, you know what? Can I get rid of some of these trails? There's got to be a button that lets me do that. There we go. Yeah, Mark Mall's on move. There we go. Some of these little ghost trails that I just annoy me. Okay, so now we got the US. They can do a limited op or event. Again, I think we talked about it. The event, you know could be really helpful it's still too early to really say if that's going to be like super important i mean getting three more available troops or bases and boosting this up yeah that could be nice but i already have two bases i could be placing i have like what is this 23 cubes i could be bringing in i'm not so concerned about putting three more on the board i'd rather use this opportunity let's see we wouldn't be able to go next on the next card so passing is not a good option I think we just need to use our opportunity to do some stuff. So what do we want to do? We probably want to sweep or assault. It's probably what we want to do. Because training, the Arvin already has a bunch of their stuff out. And we don't want to waste 
I mean, I want to get more bang for my buck than putting out like two cubes or like two, you know, uh, special forces rangers. I could do patrol, but I don't have like a ton of U.S. troops on the board right now, so I don't really want to be like sending them off to locks. Uh, we can't assault anywhere because again, there's no exposed guerrillas where we have troops, so we're gonna do some sweeping. Uh, so we, what do we want to do? We could sweep. We have to. We can only pick one space. One space. So again, I could move some of these cubes to an adjacent space and sweep. So I could take some out of here and bring them into Contoon and sweep. I could sweep here. But I couldn't like move them from here into play coup, right? Because that space... Well, technically, I guess I could. It's adjacent up there. Oh, I could do that. That might be smart. That might be really smart. Yeah, because we really need to start putting pressure over here. Or else they're just going to like get, get cray with that. So I think we're going to do that. We're going to pull down our pieces... I'm not super thrilled that there's a gorilla here, but hopefully we're going to leave a troop behind and hopefully they don't get to ambush it and kill it and do nasty things with it. I guess I could just bring one cube over, but honestly, we need to. They've got like a bunch of gorillas here, so we need to really. Uh, see, I could bring all these cubes in and then expose all these guys, which might be a good idea. That seems kind of maybe not great, but maybe I am going to do that. I guess I do. I should call this a victory. We got rid of a base up here, and it's going to take them a while to put a base back up there. I'm less worried about them. It's going to take them a few turns to actually bring that base back. But down here, it can get nasty in a hurry. So we'll do that. We'll move them there, and we get to... Um, if this were jungle, remember, we would need... We'd only be able to expose two things, right? Because we had four. But it's not jungle. It's the mountains. So we actually get one for one on exposing with a sweep. So all these guys go active. And maybe on the next go-around, we get to go first, and then we can either bomb them or ass assaulting will be tough because, again, that's where you do the two-for-one in the mountains, right? We can only get rid of two gorillas with four cubes. Uh, but that might be a good time to use air power again. So that sounds good to me. I think we're going to do that. That's our limited op in faction play. Discard war photographer and draw a card. Let's go ahead and move our guys over. Boom. We haven't done a lot of passing. We haven't done a lot of weird alternation here. So we've kind of been getting in this little rut where like the same two factions are going all the time. When you start passing, things will start changing up and that'll be nice. All right, US aid. Unshaded event. Shift three coin controlled spaces each one level to active support. Oh, see, the US would love, love that. And honestly, the Arvin might think that's really great too because by having them move to support, then they can later use their, um, what is it called? Their patronage op. I'm forgetting the name right now. When they use their op to engage in patronage, then they reduce it to neutral by one level. So you kind of want it to be support because then it doesn't just go to neutral. It, it stays or like, I don't know, I guess if it's at neutral, it stays neutral. But, you know, this can be good. This can be good in the long term, especially if you have a place that's like passive support. You can move it to active support and then it would just go to passive if you did your patronage action. Uh, what's the shaded event? Increase or decrease any or all of Arvin resources, aid, and patronage by two each. Yuck. That, that's weird that you can do increase or decrease. So you could be helping your Arvin buddy making deals, I guess, if you wanted to. But I don't want to lose resources, aid, and patronage by two. That's pretty great. I don't know if NVA would want to do that, though, because they want to build up. They don't necessarily... They might want to hurt the Arvin, but the Arvin's like mm, not teetering right now, so I don't know if that's going to be like the move that pushes them over. Do they want to take the event? They probably don't want to take the event. They have, a, they still have a fair amount of resources. We still got fifteen. We're doing okay. Doing okay on resources. We haven't lost a ton of things yet. But what could we be doing? And we probably do an Arvin special. So this might be a good time to be busting out our specials. I don't think I've talked about our specials. Oh, no, we did. We did the raid, transport. It's called Govern. That's the one that lets you build patronage. That would only be a trainer patrol op. We could do a transport and move things around. We don't have a gorilla to, or another ranger thing to do the raid with. Although, if we do transport, check this out. We can move up to six Arvin troops or rangers from one space via an adjacent lock or cities, and if desired, then into any adjacent destination. It's kind of like sweeping. Um... And then we stop an insurgents and flip all rangers underground. I kind of wonder if that means rangers you move or just all rangers on the board. I don't really want to stop. Uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to consult the rule book. I have the rule book with me. We're just going to very quickly look this up. 
Because if that's true, I mean, that could be kind of nice. Oh, yeah, so the rules make it more clear. It says then flip all rangers anywhere on the map to underground. So we could transport and then flip our one ranger that we used up here back underground, which could be helpful because, again, they have they've come back. They're back. Um, yeah, we could do that. Transport is not a bad thing. It lets us mass things very quickly. Oh, but I got to think about Huey and all this stuff. Or, not, or Contum. This is, this is not great. So we might want to sweep again. Might want to sweep again. Yeah, I think we are going to sweep. That sounds like a good idea. Yep, 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 yep. I think we're going to sweep. So what are we going to do that in? We're going to do it basically bringing down my pieces. Do it in Contoon because I don't want them subverting more of my forces away. That's that's nasty. I don't like that. I don't like it. Uh, we're going to sweep here. It's kind of getting expensive now. I don't know if I want to spend all these resources doing this. No, we gotta go big. Gotta go big or go home. We wanted to secure this. I think that's what we're gonna do. So if we wanna sweep, or do we wanna transport and then do something good? Sweep lets us do any province today's three resources, move any Arvin troops if desired. So we can only move troops with the sweep. If we do transport, we can move troops or rangers. So we can't move police. The only way we can move police is using patrol. We could train them if we had a base, and the only way we can build a base is if we can place three Arvin cubes with a base. Uh, so we could eventually build a base. We only have one base we can build. That's the, that's like the only way to get police, I believe, into the provinces, which is um, kind of on purpose because it's because basically when we do a coup round, all the troops like go back to the cities. <laughs> they, they they like leave the countryside and only police remain. It, it can be kind of annoying. So that's what we'll do. We'll pay three six. Nine to sweep. We could govern. No, because it's only a trainer patrol and we're sweeping. So we can either do transport or raid. We could do another transport and just start moving more things around, which can be really helpful. We could move this ranger around if we wanted to and get him like down here. No, he could he would have to stick around here. Hmm, 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 hmm. I do want to flip that ranger back underground. I wish we had more rangers. This is where I wish I, you know, it's always like, oh, I wish I had more of that stuff. That would have been really nice. I can only move troops with it. Do I want to move any troops around here? I could take a troop out of here and move it. I don't know if that's, like, super helpful, though. I don't have a ton of extra troops. I really need to focus on kind of getting the stuff done. I guess I could move this guy out. That could be nice. I'm not too worried about troop or like the forces coming into Saigon right now. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll throw this down here just so I can move this one troop cube somewhere. Um, okay, yeah. And I think that's a great idea, honestly, because I need to get another troop in here to eventually remove all those guys. Or even over here would be nice. But we're going to do it here. So here's what we're going to do. We'll do the special first. This is one of those times where we're going to do the special first. So if we look at old transport, it says move six from one space by adjacent locks or cities if desired into adjacent destinations and stop at insurgents, flip all rangers underground. Okay. This guy's going to come into here. Boom, that was the special. Um, then we can move these guys into here. Yeah, the Canto, boom, flying in. We're gonna activate these guys, boom, because we're in the lowlands, so it's a one for one for everything. So all these guys go active. That's hot. We have more than enough. How many do we have? We're like four. Yeah, let's go ahead and separate these out so we can just all see it, right? So we're gonna activate that guy because he's just getting active. And that cost us nine resources. So these are with six. Oh no, we won't separate that. Give me that guy. Yeah. So we're getting kind of poor. Getting kind of poor. And we'll move him underground, right? Because we did that special op that lets our rangers go back underground. Cool. Cool. The reason I want to get coin control is because that's how you start doing the govern special action. And we want to use the govern special action to build patronage. That's what we want to do. I think, does it have to be in a space that's in support? Yeah, it has to be one or two coin control spaces with support and not Saigon and not selected for training. 
and then each space you can add three of the pop to aid, which is really helpful because aid is how we get more resources during the uh, coup rounds. Or if it's our more Arvin cubes than US cubes there, you can transfer one times the pop from aid to patronage and shift it one level to neutral. So yeah, it's kind of why we want things in support. Which might have made that op, made the event really nice, but honestly, I want to get rid of the VC. The VC are nasty and they're everywhere and, and we got to get rid of them. Okay, so we did that. Boom, 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 boom. In faction play. Okay, now we're up to the NVA. They can do a limited op or event. This is another one of those things where they don't want to pass because they don't get to go first on the next one. They would get to go second. And I don't know if that's like that helpful for them. So yeah, they get to a limited op. They don't want the event. What would be a good limited op for them? They probably want to keep rallying. Probably want to keep rallying. Although they only have three resources. So maybe they want to take this opportunity to march. Now, why would I say that? Because March, if we remember, it costs us one resource per non-lock destination. But if it's a lock, then it's free. And we can move any troops or guerrillas into adjacent spaces, just like marching, sweeping, all that good stuff. If it's lock support and moving pieces plus... So this is the kind of the key here. If we're moving onto a space that's an LOC or or in support, like this, the space is a support, like has support, like a, I'm saying that like five times. But um, where, where was, like if I was trying to move into Fubon, okay... If I move, what's it? Let's get this right. If the moving pieces plus the U.S. Arvin cubes there and special forces exceed three, then you activate all the gorillas. So, like, if I was trying to move into Khan Hoa, right? Let's say I had a bunch of NVA guys here in Kwang Duck. If I moved two guys into Khan Hoa, that'd be okay, because two plus the one cube here, that's three. That's fine. If I moved three gorillas in there and there was this one guy there, then all those gorillas would have to go active. It's like there's just there's too much of a presence there. They would just see it happen. So it really does restrict how much you can move in and where if it, the space is in support. Again, uh, we don't want to attack because we have nowhere we can attack. We don't want to terror because well, we can terror, but there's nowhere we, we want to terror. So we're going to march. We're going to use this to, to do a free activity because we literally have like no money. <laughs> we have like no money. So we need to be a little more frugal because I don't know when this round's going to end. If we move on to a lock that has a value, and then during the coup rounds, we're like the majority of our of the NVA or VC forces there, that becomes sabotage because each one of these are worth resource points during the coup rounds that like the Arvin gets to take. So we slowly chip away at what they get if we can sabotage some of these routes. I honestly want to do that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use our limited op. We're going to march for free onto Route 14. I'm going to cover that up just so we know later that it doesn't count for anything. I could rally, honestly, but I, do, I want to do free things. I want to do free stuff, and this is a free move for us right now. So we're going to do that because the reason I want to do that is that we can now later use one of our special activities if we ever get to it. We can ambush. And if we're on a lock, if you remember, if on an LOC, target an adjacent piece if desired. So basically, if we ever get the opportunity to, we can activate this guy and then target pieces here or here or here. <laughs> we get a lot of flexibility. And we want to start taking out U.S. troops, honestly, as, as like quickly as possible. And this route would be kind of lame. I don't really care about taking out the one cube here. I guess we could take out cubes in Da Nang. That's pretty cool. But I want to focus here. I want to focus here. Okay. In faction play. Once again, ineligible, ineligible, or eligible, ineligible, boom. Goodbye, USA. Discard and draw card. Okay, we did it. We did it. We got to a coup round. This is maybe a perfect point we're going to get to and then stop. Because now we have this card is like the current card, but the next card is a coup card. We're in what's called a monsoon. Uh, monsoon basically says that you can only do limited activities. So it limits how much you can do because it's a, it's like basically... Honestly, in the coin games, what would happen is in the previous volumes, you would see the coup card coming up, and then you would have this one extra turn to like do a bunch of stuff. So you would do a bunch of actions that maybe you would never do normally because it wouldn't be appropriate, but it would get you points or put you more ahead by getting forces on the board. And then you could like win the game or something, right? They did this because by calling it a monsoon rule, it, it limits what you can do. So during a monsoon, there is no sweeping, there's no marching, no pivotal events can be played. An airlift and airstrike are at max two spaces. So by not allowing sweep marches or pivotal events, that can be really helpful in terms of like just keeping you from doing things you want to do. 
That's very interesting. No sweep, no marches, and no pivotal. We don't have to worry about pivotal events, but only airlift and airstrike. We can max two spaces. Okay, okay. U.S. is first. Let's see what this event does. Non-shaded. Outside the south, flip all insurgent, all insurgents active, and remove one NVA base. So outside the south. That means South Vietnam. Ooh, that could be good in a way. That could be good. We could get rid of a base, basically, and then keep all their guerrillas active. I'm not so worried about the active guerrilla thing. Getting rid of the base is nice. Shaded. SR-71 pilot must outrun the SA-2s. That's the Soviet anti-aircraft missiles that were provided. Place one NVA base at NVA control outside of the south. Okay, that's a lot of places. And flip any three NVA guerrillas underground. Well, they don't really have any active guerrillas, but getting a free base, see, that would be hot back then when I was trying to save money. That would be a great event because uh, getting a free base, that's pretty much worth it. That's pretty great. Uh, we're not really getting a lot of really like, great events for people, so I'm not too I don't think the VC is going to like want to do that for their NVA buddies. So I think we can be safe again in taking the op and the special activity. I think that's going to be a good thing to do. Okay. So we're gonna we're actually getting some nice little linkages here. We're getting some nice linkages. I think we're gonna do again, we're gonna assault an airstrike because we have the opportunity to take out this area. I think that's what, exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, so once again we would put our pieces on, but it's only one space, because I can't assault anywhere else. Like there's no like there's no active guys to kill here. Um, the troops here aren't around active stuff, so no, we can't do that. We could advise, that's a really interesting uh, special that um, I honestly don't think I use all that much. And advise a strike with indigenous forces, add aid. That lets us add aid, which is hot. You can do it with a trainer patrol op, and in one or two spaces not selected for training, in each space you can sweep in place or assault with the Arvin for zero for free. That's pretty hot. And activate an underground ranger or regular to remove two enemy pieces there. And we could add six aid, which is like real good. Um... Like, I could advise here, but I don't have any Arvin troops there. Like, if we need to start getting some special force on the board because that would really make that better play. I could use, like, advise to help them kill stuff here for free and then add more aid. That's pretty cool. But again, I want to just take this out. I think we have an opportunity here to link together our sweep and attack options that kind of lined up perfectly for us. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Uh, if you remember, we roll a die when we do the airstrike. And this tells us how many points we get. Hopefully we get a lot because we could use some points to knock down the trail. That would be really good. Um, okay, let's see what we get here. Let's see what we get. Oh, we roll a six. Oh, that is, that is the hotness. That is the hotness. So what we're going to do, this is perfect. We're going to use two points to knock the trail down to one. So all that effort that the NBA did to build the trail up, totally negated by airstrikes. Uh, we're going to use four of our points. That took two, and then we'll use the other four to get rid of these gorillas. Okay, so move them active, return to available. Oh, this this actually worked out way better than we could have really hoped for. This was a great, that was a great roll. We really only needed, like, a two, because that would let us get rid of, I mean, we would have liked to have more than two, but a minimum of two would have been perfect, because we got, got, could have gotten rid of, well, actually, we wanted a three. We needed a three or higher, so that actually was pretty great. Uh, okay, all those guys have been removed airstrikes. We do shift this one level towards opposition. And now we can use our assault action. Um, now we can we have four cubes, one open base. We totally take that base out. Boom. Oh, that's that feels good. That feels good. We were able to get rid of... This can be difficult if you don't get rid of the VC here quickly in the mountains because they can just start sticking around and being a pain in the butt. This is great, because now we're going to be able to probably get out of play coup pretty quickly. And, um, yeah, that's just that's just fantastic, as they say. Okay, so we did our op and special. Now we have the VC. They get a limited op or the event. Again, I don't, don't know if they want to help out the VC or the NBA that much. I mean, they've been taking a beating here, right? So they kind of want to like use their limited op to do something for them. What could they want to do? Ooh, okay, see, this is perfect. So we can only pick one space. We probably want to do something like this. I think I want to use my limited op here because I want to put a base here, okay? I, because I'm pretty sure that these troop cubes are going to have to leave when we do our um, leader that comes up. We go through all the phases. I'm pretty sure they have to redeploy and leave the province. So this is great. So what we're going to do is 
pay one resource. Nice. It would have been nice to keep more bases on the board, but I'm, I'm pretty okay with this. So return that to available. Active, return that to available. We are going to give them coin control. That is not awesome. But I don't think they'll be able to pass. I mean, maybe, and if I goofed, that I goofed. You know, that's kind of what it is. I guess, you know, since we're talking about that, let's double check that they could not just pacify that right away up to support, because that would sort of negate the of doing that. I'd rather not let them have... Oh, they would need police. Yep, yep, yep. They don't have police there, so they couldn't do it. This is perfect. That's great. Okay, perfect. So we'll do a base there, uh, and we'll say in faction play. Okay, so here's how we do this. That was our monsoon card. It gets discarded. Let's go ahead and draw a card so we can always see the next card. Ooh, an Arvin capability is coming up. Okay. So now we're doing a coup round. This is this is one of those snapshots that we're going to do. So this will probably be the end of this video. We'll do the coup round, and that'll be great. So let's go through it. We have a little special thing down here. Coup card. Cool. So the first thing, victory check. Boom. Does anybody have victory? Nobody has victory yet. We It's pretty early. It'd be really surprising if anybody could like zoom to the front and get victory. Don't have victory. Okay, moving on to resources. On resources, first thing we do is we sabotage uh, locks that have more insurgent than coin pieces or adjacent to a non-coin controlled city. So if somehow the insurgents can grab hold of a city, they sabotage all the locks adjacent to it, but they don't have control of a city. In fact, the only thing that we have here is Route 14. So there is a marker we could put down. I guess we can pull it out, right? It is a sabotage marker. Where is it? Do we have that here? Is that not there? Where do we do sabotage markers? Maybe they're hiding out somewhere and I don't know. It's not like super important because they go away. It's just like a mental aid to like look at and be like, oh right, it's a it's a marker. Um probably could know where that is if I looked a little more. I'm not gonna worry about it. That is sabotage. Boom. There's like a little mark. Oh, you know what it is? I think it's the terror markers. And then you flip over the terror markers, which would kind of be nice to know where those are at anyway. That's player eight. Oh, I can hide those? Oh, we can bring up our own special window. I could have been doing that. That's a little easier to read, isn't it? <laughs> cool. Uh, I've, I forgot that window existed. Um, <laughs> funny, that's funny. Wow, is it really not there? Where are the terror markers? Because those are like important to know. Are they hiding at the bottom somewhere? Huh. I'm gonna have to find that off camera. I don't know where those are at. I should know where that. Oh, here they are. No, that's deception. Are they hiding over here somewhere? Deception markers get used if you want to do like an advanced game, because it like messes with the victory conditions a little to keep it not so like it's a little bit of hidden information essentially. Huh? That's funny. I will find out where the terror markers are. And then that would be where you get a sabotage. Usually it's the opposite side of it. That is weird. I wish I knew where that was. I'm not going to spend forever doing this because I'm taking a long time for nothing exciting happening. Okay, we're not going to worry about it. I'll find it off camera. Not a big deal. So that's sabotaged. Okay. We're going to degrade the trail by one box if any of the Laos or Cambodia spaces is coin controlled. They are not coin controlled. They are all under NBA control. The Laos and Cambodia spaces all are empty. Okay, great. Now we're going to add resources to the factions as follows. The Arvin gets a total econ. So the econ is all their lock locks added up and those add up to 15, all of them, okay? But we sabotaged one, so they only get 14 and they get the aid. So whatever their aid level is, it's 15 right now. So they're gonna get what, 29 resources, 29. So they go from six to 35 resources. Okay, cool. The NVA gets the number of their bases in Laos and Cambodia plus two times the trail value. See, if we could add the trail up, that could be that could have been real good. Could have been real good. Um, but it, it, it wasn't, so that's the way it goes. So they have five bases. Oh wait, is that only in Laos and Cambodia? Is that what I just said? Yeah, so actually they have 
four bases in Laos and Cambodia. So one, two, and then we put two down here. So that's four plus two times one is two. So they get six resources. They're up to nine. Still pretty cash poor. And the VC gets their number of bases. They have seven bases out. So they get seven more resources. So they're up to 14. That's pretty great for the VC, honestly. And then finally, we would subtract three times the number of casualty pieces. There are none here, but if we had any of those, we would take three times that from the aid level. This is why doing casualties is really good, because you can really start knocking down the aid very quickly. All right, so now we move on to the support phase. Boom, boom. During the support phase, first, the U.S. and the Arvin may pacify a combined total of up to four spaces that have coin control, police, and their own troops. For every three resources they spend, they remove any terror markers there first, and then once there's no more of those terror markers, you can shift at one level to active support up to two levels per space. So if it's at neutral, you can go to active. If it's at like passive opposition, then you could go to passive support. If it's at active opposition, you can just shift it to neutral, right? So it's just two, two spaces. So we have to have coin control, police, and their own troops. Oh, and what a dummy I was, because I did not leave... <laughs> Uh, any guys in Saigon, but I think the U.S. will pacify it. But that was that was kind of dumb. Or Kanto. Look how silly I was. So silly I could have actually done that. But that's okay. You live and learn. What we will do is we'll improve the cities that we can do it in. So we can pick four spaces. I think I'll pick Onlock, Camera. Uh, we'll go ahead and do Contum because I think that's important. Oh, we can only pick four. There's so many of these cities that need to get done. So actually, we're going to pick the cities that have nothing in them. Because I don't want the VC like rallying in there because they can only rally in places without support. So we'll do Hue, Da Nang, Contum, and we get to pick one other space for funsies, and I'm going to pick Unlock. Okay, so that's three, six, nine. Oh, wait, it's for two levels. So here's how we're going to do we're going to increase Hue by one level to support. Although this is how you can govern, so maybe it is worth spending. Okay, we'll, we'll do this two levels. This is going to get six. That costs us six resources right there. So now we're down to 29. Oh, the money goes quickly. The money goes quickly. Da Nang will increase just by one level. So now we're down to 26. Um, what else did I say? Oh, yeah, Contum, Contum will actually adjust. Oh, they got gorillas there. Not too worried about that. Let's do just one level, because I can't just be blowing all of the money, the Arvin's money, like right away. That's not great. And then on lock, we'll increase by one level. Cool. Ugh, 20 resources is not a ton. I did spend a lot of money there, so we're going to have to definitely find ways to be more economical for the Arvin. Okay, uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, now the U.S. can do that. They can do it in any spaces again, up to four, with coin control, police, and their own troops. So there's only a couple places where they, there are police and their own troops and coin control. It's not play coup. It's not anything up there. There's no police here. There is police here, so they could actually imp improve Da Nang. But again, they have to spend Arvin resources to do this. And the Arvin is already spent a ton of their resources. So I think we're just going to increase Saigon one more level, right? Because we want to increase support for the U.S. victory condition. So we'll spend three resources to do that. Yuck, they're getting poor. But look at this. Look at this. We now have our victory condition. We are at 51 support plus available. That is technically enough to win if another coup round comes up quickly. So we have to keep that in mind as the um, opposition, right? And as also as the Arvin, we need to keep that in mind. But I think the Arvin's going to start governing and knocking that stuff down, knocking it down to get to get their own patronage up. Okay. The VC may now agitate into four spaces with any VC and no coin control. For every one VC resource spent, it removes a terror there. Or once there's no terror, again, shifts it one level to active opposition up to two levels per space. They are going to spend, see, they have money to spend, so they can actually do that. But it can't be coin control, and they have to have VC there and no coin control. So we'll pick Tainin, we'll pick Kwong Duck. So let's go ahead and do that. So they're going to go to opposition one level here, opposition one level there. That's super great. Oh, they could do that here because they do have a guy and no coin control, so that maybe was a mistake to not let them do that, right? Ooh, so I picked two spaces. Yeah, this works out perfectly. I'll pick this one. That's three spaces. 
So I've, I've paid just one to do that. So it's one, two, three, and here we'll spend two to bring this up to, yeah, because there's no coin control here in VC. So it was five resources total, so we're down to nine. That's hot too. Look at this, opposition plus bases. We're almost there, we're almost there, we're at 32. That's pretty great, that's pretty great. Okay, that is the support phase. Do, 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 do. Redeploy. During the redeploy, we can adjust the control only after we do this, so you, luckily we're on a map that automatically does that for us. It's hot. So we're gonna remove all US and Arvin pieces from Laos and Cambodia. If we had any US pieces in Laos and Cambodia, they would go to out of play. That's one little penalty. If you get caught out there in a coup round, you, you're gone. Um, but we don't have any pieces, so we don't have to worry about that. Arvin must move its troops from locks and provinces without any U.S. or Arvin bases and may move other troops if we want to cities without NVA control to any place that has a U.S. Arvin base or Saigon. And then the Arvin may move any police to locks or coin control within South Vietnam. So this is one way we could get police into provinces, sort of, if we could somehow keep them there. But they have to move all troops from locks and provinces without U.S. or Arvin bases. So what I'll do is I'll take, we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. These guys will go to Kanto. These guys will go to Saigon. We'll send uh, three to Saigon, one more to Kanto. That sounds good. I think that's the only place, because police don't have to move, only troops do right now. Were there any other troops we had outside? No, so we had no other troops. Um, we could move any of our other Arvin troops to the city so we can kind of redeploy our forces as needed. I kind of like where our troops are right now. I don't really want to move a bunch of them around. Um, let's see what else can we do. Gotta stop using so many ums. We can then move any police to any LOCs or coin control within South Vietnam. So anywhere we have coin control, we could move more police or to any of the LOCs, which is kind of great, honestly. That's kind of a really good move. Where do we have coin control that would be good in the provinces? Nowhere really. I mean, I could have put more police down here, which is probably not a terrible idea. Throw another police there. Throw another police there. Oh, I have so many police here. This is great. So let's start protecting our LOCs. Let's put one there. Shift. Uh... Oh man, there's just so many places to go and not enough people to do things with. Let's go ahead and put a guy here. I think that's a good idea. Um, you're all by your lonesome. Oh wait, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one, I don't wanna take every police, but I do wanna take one police out here and we're gonna throw it over here. I think that's a good idea to maybe start combating, keeping the, the NVA from just like running in here and just doing dumb things. And you know what, we're gonna take one more police. I don't want to take a ton of guys out of the cities because that limits the amount of ability I can get things out, you know, like having them go on missions and not leaving the city totally vulnerable. But we're going to do that. So I'll put one here on Route 14. Okay, so we did that. So now we can redeploy the NVA. The NVA may move tr NVA troops from any spaces to any NVA bases. So I have a bunch of troops down here. I don't know if I necessarily need a bunch of troops down here right now. And if I put three troops up here, I can start start bombarding this space and Quang Nam. I do like flexibility when I bombard. I don't know if that's like super important, but and I do maybe want to invade at some point. Hmm. I still think we'll do it. We'll take these three. And I'll put them up here. We then adjust all control. Luckily, this does it already for us. It's pretty great. All right, then we go to the commitment phase. Well, first it's the game end. If this was the final round, we would determine victory right now. Okay, but it's not. So now we're going to do commitment and then reset. So now commitment. If you're the non-US player, we check policy. We're not doing that because we're soloing and being awesome. This is where we would take one and three, rounding down US troop and all base casualties out of play, but we have no casualties. Okay, so don't have to worry about that. All the other casualties we move to available. And then the US may move up to 10 US troops and two bases among available to any coin control city, any locks, and Saigon, and then adjust control. We are definitely gonna be bringing troops out. We need more stuff. <laughs> we need more stuff, more stuff. Um, 
don't necessarily want to bring a base out maybe but i do want to bring troops out and i can bring them out to any coin control any locks or saigon um yeah we need troops we need troops in a big way i want them to start making pushes up here so let's bring let's bring three into Nang. three into way way um there's a lot going on here but i do want to bring some to saigon too so let's bring like two more to saigon so about three six now i'm gonna bring three more down here we'll put three in saigon so that's quite a bit but um things are starting to heat up you can see the nva is starting to like build up and i probably should have just said pick three instead of doing this slow drag um but the vc is building up the nva is building up i want to start making aggressive moves with my u.s troops all right, so we did it, and then we reset. If we're if the trail's at zero, it would improve to one. It is not at zero. If it was at four, it would go to three. That's kind of what the little arrows tell you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Remove all terror and sabotage. We don't have any terror or sabotage markers on there. Well, we would have a sabotage marker if I could find it, but it goes away now. All gorillas and uh, special forces go underground. We discard any momentum cards. All factions become eligible. So, boom. Everybody goes to here. And I believe there is a reset phase, right? Yeah, boom, we do that. Cool, so that does it automatically for us. It would flip all gorillas underground, does all that good stuff. I love, love the buttons, love the vassal automation here. We then can say, end all the movement things, there we go. And we do the next card, we do the next card. So what we do here, we have this coup here. Now here's what happens, when you do a coup round, some of them are just like straight up defecting or like a desertion cards, right? And they don't, they don't, it represents no leadership change, but like a bunch of people just left, like are deserting the army because the Arvin had low morale at various points. This represents basically a new leader coming into power. So this is Win, uh, Win, Cow Key, Win Key, basically. Uh, so we're gonna put him down here you know what I realize? I think we did train. I don't think I ever did this. I don't think I ever added the five bonus aid. I did not do that. I did not. And I definitely did that once. So you know what? We're going to retroactively fix that. Because <laughs> I want it. So it's going to go to 20. And that's going to give us like five more resources here. Right? Okay. We're going to take advantage of that. Because that's like the one nice thing about that leader. He actually like lets you boost up your aid. Because I think he was like somewhat responsible. All right, so now we have win key here. So what does he do? Sometimes they give you bonuses, sometimes they give you negatives. This one says pacification costs four resources per terror or level. So key was not into pacification at all. Normally it costs you three. This is going to cost us four. Great, great. Okay, great. Awesome. Great leader. All right, let's draw a card. So when we come back on the next game or next time I do the next video, we're going to start off with the Mandate of Heaven. This gives us a nice Arvin capability, which we'll talk about then. And uh, yeah, so that's all we're going to do. Um, thanks for watching.